For the first time since the Syrian conflict erupted more than a decade ago, a Western country is looking into atrocities committed by rebel groups. France's official war crimes unit confirmed to DW that it is investigating Jaish al-Islam, once considered the strongest armed opposition group in Syria. DW's investigative unit spoke to several witnesses who say they suffered abuse and torture at the hands of the hardline Islamists. This is how hardline Islamist group Jaish al-Islam portrays itself. Brave rebels fighting the Assad regime for a free and just Syria. Shop owner Rata Prebia says that's all lies. The group was only fighting for power. They shot him in the face in an assassination attempt, he says, and later imprisoned him for being in a rival rebel group in his hometown, Huta. They tortured me in many different ways. They wanted me to confess anything, that I was homosexual, working with ISIS or the regime, or was selling drugs. It didn't matter what. They brought in four teenagers to beat me continuously so I wouldn't be able to sleep. They beat me nonstop until I collapsed and started to hallucinate. Video from after the Assad regime retook the region show the small cells where Rateb Khibiya spent more than two years in isolation. They are part of a prison network where he and others told us Jaysh al-Islam held and tortured hundreds of people, opponents and civilians alike. There is no difference between the prisons of Jaysh al-Islam and the prisons of the Assad regime. It's the same torture, the same mistreatment. It's all the same. DW's investigative team spoke to several witnesses who told us similar accounts. They said Jaysh al-Islam went after political opponents, activists and religious minorities. In the city of Adra, the rebel group worked with other jihadists to capture hundreds of Christians and Alevites. They later put them in cages and used the prisoners as human shields against Assad's forces. Despite such abuses, the international community for years embraced Jaysh al-Islam as the strongest armed opposition force on the ground. Their political leader even led the opposition delegation to UN-sanctioned talks on Syria. Jaysh al-Islam told DW it denied the human rights abuses. But for the first time, a French court is investigating the group. It was this international team of lawyers which filed the criminal complaint. The allegations include torture, executions and the use of child soldiers. It is time to say out loud that the Syrian population has also been victims of other groups who um, pretended to be fighting for the revolution but to, who also turned against the population. They hope the court will issue charges in the coming months. Their biggest challenge now is to find more witnesses and convince them to testify. Many are still in Syria, some even in territory controlled by Jaysh al-Islam. The Syrian regime and Jaysh al-Islam still have a lot of uh, power and influence and capacity to intimidate and threaten the victims and the witnesses. So this really is a, a major concern for us because um, any prosecution, successful prosecution, will also have to rely on this kind of testimonial evidence. Now in Turkey, Rata Prebia isn't afraid. He would like nothing more than to testify in court. Jaysh al-Islam, he says, ruined his life, just like the Assad regime. And he wants to see them held accountable for what they did. And Lewis Sanders is a reporter with DW's investigative team who worked on that report. Lewis, first of all, tell us why you and the rest of your team decided to investigate Jaysh al-Islam. Well, we started our investigation looking into several armed groups who could have been involved in the disappearance of Razan Zaytuna 
a Syrian human rights activist and lawyer who was just monumental to the pro-democracy movement in Syria, especially in the wake of the 2011 uprising. Now, as we were uh, in the middle of our investigation, we gathered a lot of evidence that placed Razan Zaytuna in Talba prison. And there's only one armed rebel group that operated that prison, and that's Jaysh al-Islam. And as you noticed in the report, that he was many of the people that we spoke to were also in Talba prison. Now, throughout our investigation, we also collected uh, a lot of evidence that suggests that Jaysh al-Islam was also involved in other atrocities, including the rape of religious minorities, torture, and summary executions. Hmm. And so, uh, you know, what we have seen is that, you know, Jaysh al-Islam was involved in, in quite possibly very, very um, you know, grave atrocities. And there's even credible information to suggest that uh, there are mass graves yet to be uncovered on uh, the premises of this detention center. Now, we heard in that report that we just watched that you that your team says that the international community embraced Jaysh al-Islam. Uh, tell us more about that. Well, Syria today is much different than it was back then in 2013. And, you know, back then, uh, the Europeans and Americans were looking to, to start gaining influence in the conflict, especially as it began to kind of spill outside of the region. And so... Uh, but the Europeans and Americans really didn't have anyone on the ground that they could trust. Jaysh al-Islam at this moment was ascendant. They were the strongest armed opposition group on the ground. They were also the most organized. So it just made sense that they would bring them into the fold and, uh, and you know, bring them into these ceasefire talks because they had influence. And, uh, and you know, one of the, I think, the important things to say, though, also is that uh, back then, you know, speaking to some of our diplomatic and security sources, they said, look, back then we weren't thinking about human rights. We were thinking about strategy and how to kind of expand our, our say in the conflict. Hmm. Hmm. Well, your report there focuses on Jaysh al-Islam's past activities. Uh, what can you tell us about the group's status today? Well, they're a shadow of what, who they once were. Uh, in their peak, they had up to 20,000 soldiers among their ranks, and today they have about 6,000. Now, part of that is due to just years of hard fighting, years of siege, and the eventual evacuation to northern Syria. Today, their primary supporter is Turkey, and uh, they've been kind of assimilated into this loose collective of hardline rebel groups fighting Assad. Uh, but they've also taken up other causes, such as fighting the Kurds, which, are, which is obviously uh, in the interest of uh, Turkey. And so, you know, is that what their founder, Zahran Alush, uh, you know, envisioned for them? Uh, likely not, but those are the facts on the ground today. Lewis, thank you very much. Uh, that was Lewis Sanders from DW's investigative team. Thank you.